welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya. This is Saya Swag. Um, I have a new tutorial for you today that I'm super excited about. It's, might be, might be my favorite design from Shambhala yet. It is just adorable. It's called the Avayana. I think I'm saying that right. Avayana bag. And it is her latest release, and it is just such a cute pattern. I love it. I love it. Um, it is a little bit time-consuming because you're doing grommets, but if you have the right tools, it'll probably go a lot smoother and faster for you. Um, I need to just, I need to have a grommet 101 uh, with cam snaps and... <laughs> and figure that all out. But this is the end result. I absolutely love it. It's supposed to be worn as a crossbody, but I think this could easily be turned into a backpack as well. So if you're like, I love the design, but I want it as a backpack, I know there's a way to do it. I mean, just put your connectors on there and you've got a backpack. It is, it is so cute. All right, so the features of this bag, I used all Butter vinyl from Weft and Warp on my vinyl pieces. Um, this printed cotton is from Hawthorne. I don't remember exactly the designer. It's a Hawthorne Threads um, find. And then on the inside, look how cute. Oh my goodness. Zoop. On the inside, I use Lux Nylon from Wonderground, and it made such a fantastic lining. I highly suggest it. Um, I haven't done many linings with it. I've done lots of outside of bags with it, but it makes such a cool lining, especially for this bag because you need it to scrunch up. It was perfect for that. So you see how I've got all of those grommets on there. I did them all by hand with a hammer and a tool. So it took me a while. I couldn't figure out how to make the dies on my press work and that's okay. I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, it's fine. So it has this front zipper pocket. I used a tassel zipper pull that I love. I have those on my website. Um, I've been using them more and more because I'm like, oh, I like those. <laughs> um, it has an inside zipper pocket that I added, but those are really the only pockets on this bag. I don't feel like it needs much more than that anyways. Um, I used Woven from Geeky Hardware Wizardry Stitchery. I use their woven interfacing on all my cotton pieces. And then I use Decaville light on my vinyl pieces and Decaville heavy on the bottom. Um, I didn't love the Decaville. I think next time for this style of bag and because of the way it scrunches up, I'll use fleece. I was debating that in the beginning too when I was putting this whole bag together. I knew I should have gone fleece. I should have just listened to my gut. Um, Fabric Therapy has some self-adhesive fleece, which would be perfect for this bag. So if I make this again, that's for sure what I'm doing. Um, other than that, it's interfaced great. I just should have done fleece. And then it just pulls back up like that. I mean, guys, it's really cute. I did do some piping here, some faux piping. I did it a little bit differently. <laughs> I did it a little bit differently than I usually do. I put a smaller piece of foam down the center of my piping and folded it and basted it together. And it just gave it a little bit of, you know, something in there so it wasn't flat and I actually really like it. That's probably what I'll do from here on out. I like it. All right, so I wanna do a shout out to one of my Patreon members, Brenda Zimmern. Thank you so much for your support. Um, it really means a lot. If you guys haven't heard, I have a Patreon. We do some fun things. We just did a, um, a Zoom call for my top tier people last night, and it was super fun getting to know everybody. So if you're interested, the link below in the description, go check that out. And again, this is Shambhala. All of the materials I used, all of the tools, and the link to purchase the pattern will be down below in the description. Go check that out. And I hope this video helps you put together this adorable bag. I really love the style of this, guys. It is different. It is new. And my flap color is a happy accident. I totally messed up. The first flap was this dark brown. I put the magnetic snap on the outside of it. 
I know better. It was just a long day and I should have just stopped. <laughs> so luckily I had this pretty contrasting lighter color and it actually looks like I meant to do that. So I just meant to do that. It's fine. It's fine. All right. All right. Um, please let me know if you guys have any concerns, questions, comments. Um, and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. And let's start making this cute bag. I wanted to add one more little afterthought after making the bag to give you kind of what I think. Um, so with this drawstring here, when you close the bag and you put the flip, the flap over, the magnetic snap is kind of hard to do. Um, I think if I were to make this bag again, I would do a turn lock right here. I think a turn lock makes more sense just because it's hard to do the drawstring and the magnetic snap. It's doable. Obviously it's doable, but I feel like if you're getting in and out of your bag a lot, a turn lock would be a lot easier to open and close on the style of bag. So that would be my suggestion for making the changes on what I did. So fleece and a turn lock. Okay, let's go over our pieces for this bag. I did kind of a bit of prep work um, after I cut it out and interfaced it all. I also put on all my markings for my grommets, my snaps. I already installed my nameplate and I already installed one connector and thing of piping. I'll show you how to do the other side so you won't miss out on that. Um, but I did try and get quite a bit of prep work done before I started this video. All right, so what do we need? I have my crossbody strap. It's only a three inch wide. So you need three fourths inch um, hardware. If you're gonna do an inch, make sure that you um, you compensate for that and get the right hardware for all of that. So three fourths inch wide when I'm done for my strap. I have my little piece for the drawstring all cut out. I haven't looked at how we're putting that together yet, but I will. Um, I did cut two things out for piping. I did it just a little bit differently this time and I really like it. So I'll show you how I do that, but I've got a one inch strip of my um, butter vinyl and then I have a half inch strip of foam. It's gonna give it, when I put it in there, it's gonna give it some volume so it won't be totally flat and give it more of that piping look but still I won't have to switch to a piping foot, which is nice because my machine can sew through this. I'm trying to avoid switching <laughs> that foot because um, we all know how much I hate that. Okay, so that you should have two strips of this. I've already sewn on one. All right, so I have all of my pieces here. <clears throat> I have got my flap panel piece front and back. I'm doing both of the vinyl for that. I've already installed my nameplate. I have my magnetic snap marking already on there. I am not doing a raw edge, so I will be sewing around that and turning it through. Um, so I will have a finished edge, but you can do either way on this bag. You can do finished or a raw edge. Okay. I have the bottom of my bag. So the base piece, you should have two, lining and exterior. I did put Decaville Heavy on my exterior. I will probably do like a decorative stitch that also um, helps tack this down. So I will probably add that to my bottom piece. My front panel top, you should have one of those. And this has your grommet markings and this one has a snap placement on it as well because your flap will be closing on this piece. I did cut down my Decaville into top and bottom for that front panel because you have a zipper pocket in the middle of this front panel. Um, if you're doing a different kind of interfacing that you can add after the fact, go for it. But when I do Decaville, I kind of like to adhere it first if I can. So I just made sure it was all out of my seam allowances and just cut that down a little bit. Hopefully that makes sense. I think it does. <laughs> okay, so here's my bottom panel piece. Uh, maybe, I'm showing the pattern piece, not the actual pieces. There, my bottom panel piece, lining and exterior. And again, I have my Decaville on there out of my seam allowances. My 
back panel and my main panel pieces here. So my front two pieces that I just showed you will end up looking like this with a zipper in the middle. All right, and then I do have a big piece of Decaville. I have my grommet markings already on there before I assemble any of this bag. So I don't have to go and try and mark where my grommets go after my pieces are together. It's a lot easier if you do it now. All right, I have my gussets. So you should have two exterior and two lining. My exterior, I have put my gusset markings already in there. I put one connector on already and I did my piping. Do you see how my piping looks a little bit thicker? It's because I put that foam in the middle. I think I'm gonna like it. All right, so there's one. Here's the other side. I'll show you how to do that and then two lining. My flap support piece is just one little piece. I don't think I'm supposed to interface that with anything. Nope. My front zip pocket lining. And I have um, put a woven on all of these cotton pieces, a woven interfacing. And then my zip pocket piece for my inside of my bag. And I think, was there two of those? No, just one. Yes. And then all of my hardware, hopefully I have it. Um, I'm doing these. They're not quite grommets. They're called large eyelets from, I think I got them at Joann's or Hobby Lobby. I cannot for the life of me get my press to do grommets. I've tried so hard and I don't know if I'm not doing it right. Um, so I'll be using a hammer and a tool to put in these grommets. There are screwing grommets. There are forced fit grommets. Um, and then there's press grommets. Those are the ones I know of. And it calls for 12. So I don't want to do 12 screw and grommets. I don't want to do 12 press grommets. So I really, I'm just going to do these large eyelets. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be great. All right. My cross body strap hardware, uh, three, four swivel hooks, uh, three, four slide. I've got some rivets. Um, my other connector for the other side. I've got two. Um, zip, zip end caps for my drawstring. That's going to be cute on the end. Um, oh, and I forgot to go over my drawstring piece. That's, uh, going to go on the end of my drawstring and I have two zipper taps for my front zipper. Here is my front zipper. I did a tassel pull on it already done. My tassel pull piece was five by four. All right, and then it's just put in there with a screw. I sell these on my website, these zipper pulls. And then one magnetic snap. I think that's all the pieces. All right, let's start making this bag. I'm gonna start by prepping. I'm gonna finish my strap, my crossbody strap, and I'm gonna sew up my drawstring first just to get those two things out of the way so I don't have to do it at the very end. So I'm doing my crossbody strap. I've got my double-sided tape, my line down the center. It's kind of faded, but it's there. I'm gonna fold my raw edges to that middle line, not quite meeting. I'm gonna leave a, the tiniest gap in between the two um, because you don't want your edges to butt up against each other when you fold it again. And then I will fold it after that and sew down each side. There is my crossbody strap all sewn up. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hardware on. I am gonna put some um, strap ends on this. I think it'll look really nice. I just realized that I grabbed one inch and not three fourths inch, so I need to go find those. But I'm gonna put it through my hardware first just because I wanna make sure it can fit. <clears throat> All right, and then I think I'm going to rivet this on. So I'm just going to clip here. 
I'm gonna put on my swivel hook and go up and back down there. And then I'll be riveting on this other one. Wait, this way, this way. And I will put a strap end on this as well. Let me go grab the right strap ends. Okay, I have my little strap ends here. They have two holes in the back. You want those screws to be towards the back of the strap, not showing on the front. So you're gonna put it this way. And you may have a little extra room in there. You can double fold this little piece if there's room for it. This one, not quite enough room for mine, but I think it'll be okay. All right, and then you just screw that in and it catches the strap in there and connects it all. Just gives a nice finish to your strap, makes it look a little classier for your bag. All right, so there's my strap end. So now I want to put it, fold it over here. And I'm going to Punch a hole for my rivet. That right there. Looks good. And then put my rivet in. Okay, so that is one side. It just makes it look nice. You don't have to have the strap ends, but it's pretty. All right, and then I'm going to repeat for right here. I don't have to have, actually, I'm not going to add a strap end to this side because it's kind of hidden by everything. I am just going to do a rivet here. So actually, only one strap end for this bag. I think I'll do two rivets on this side. One and two. All right, so there's one end there. And my other end with the connector. Looks good, all right. Done with that. Moving on, we're gonna do the drawstring and all you're doing on this drawstring so far is, I mean, pretty much the same thing we did with the crossbody strap, actually. It's just smaller. So I'm folding my raw right edges into that center line. I have a center line drawn down the middle. I'm gonna fold my raw right edges in and then I'll fold it again. But this time I only sew down one side of it. You don't need to sew down both sides.
There is my drawstring for my bag all done. I'm gonna set that aside and we'll go to the next step. Let's start with the zipper pocket on the front of the back. So I have my zipper here, I already cut my zipper pull on. I've got my zipper tabs. I'm gonna take my zipper tabs and fold them in half, okay? Wrong sides together. I'm going to line that out, line that up with the raw edge of my zipper here. She does this a little bit differently and it's kind of cool. All right, so my raw edges are lined up together right here. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch along this folded edge on my zipper. So I top stitched, so this is finished, so it's just like I just added my zipper tab on. I'm going to turn that top layer over and I'm gonna trim this back part of my zipper tab and my zipper. Because we don't want that bulk in our seam allowance, okay? And that's it, that's one side of my zipper tab. Isn't that cool how she does that? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So my raw edges together, wrong sides together. So you should be seeing the right sides of your zipper tab here. Line it up with the raw edge of your zipper and go ahead and top stitch that folded edge on. Fold back that top layer and trim back the last two layers under here. Melt that zipper tape. And that is my zipper tabs. So my zipper tabs are on and that's what they look like in the back. I trimmed down that back layer. Okay, I'm gonna get my front panel. She has you using uh, double-sided tape, I'm just gonna baste. I'm not using double-sided tape, I'm just gonna baste it down. So I want my front panel here. I am gonna clip my centers though. I feel like that might be easier. I always like to know where my centers are. It seems to help me quite a bit. Tiniest, tiniest snip here. In here. All right, I want my zipper pull starting over here at the left. I'm just gonna line that all up together. I'm gonna baste this on first. She has you doing double-sided tape. It's totally your call. Do whatever you're comfortable with. All right, I'm just gonna baste that on first. And then I'm gonna take my lining piece and sandwich those two together and sew it at my full seam allowance. these back so they are both facing down right sides out and now I'm gonna top stitch along that zipper I 
have lots of kids upstairs, so we'll be hearing footsteps and people talking probably throughout this video. Sorry about that. The joys of summer. Okay. So that's what you should have right now. You're gonna to wanna to take that front panel top piece. Just going to clip my center on that for myself real quick. Okay. You're gonna to wanna to line up those centers. That piece needs to be right sides together with your zipper. And I'm gonna baste that on first. the front pocket lining piece. And we're gonna put that on the back, on the top of that zipper. And I'm gonna sew that on at my full seam allowance. Okay, so that back piece should line up with these other pieces. You're gonna flip this top part up and we're gonna top stitch along that top zipper. Okay, after you get that done, you can go ahead and baste this bottom part together, which bastes your zipper together, or your zipper pocket pieces together, okay? So just go ahead. If you need to clip it, you can. I don't think I do. It's just to make it all one piece. is my front panel. Now, if you didn't already interface your front panel pieces, now's the time where you take it and you interface it. Because I separated my Decaville pieces, mine's already done, so I don't need to do mine. So we're good, that's super cute. All right, next up. I wanna go ahead and install the female side of my magnetic snap on this front panel piece, which I already have marked out, it's on your pattern piece, so don't forget to look at that for your um, magnet placing. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the female part. And I'm not putting an extra piece behind it because it's already got this Decaville, so I think I'll be okay. But I will put tape over it and get that covered. All right, there's the snap for that. Looks good. All right, put that aside and get your flap pieces out. For those of you who are paying attention, my flap piece colors have changed. They're a little bit lighter. Um, I totally messed up the first go around and put my snap on my exterior piece. I don't even know what I was thinking. Of course, it doesn't go on that piece, so make sure... <laughs> <laughs> that you're putting the snap on the lining side of your flap. That'd be good. That might be helpful. 
Okay, so I've got my snap placement marked out. I put a piece of little Decaville on there um, when I cut this out second time around <laughs> so I don't have to put it on after the fact. And I'm going to install my snap. And I think there is enough room around this to top stitch. I'm hoping so. Fingers crossed. My line did not cut. There we go. All right, got that on. Make sure you cover that up with something. I'm gonna sew these two pieces together. Right sides together, I'm not leaving a raw edge. I am doing a finished edge. So it's up to you which way you wanna do it. The pattern piece has you, depending on if you're doing raw edge or finished, finished edge, it has you cut on a different line for cutting out the pattern pieces. So pay attention to that. All right, let's sew these two layers together. All right, I'm gonna trim mine with some pinking shears. I'm not necessarily trimming much off. I'm just making it so it has notches in it for when I turn it, it will lay nice. Here we go. Let's turn this through. Weird, I feel like I just did this. <laughs> yes, I did and I messed up. Second time's a charm, let's do it. pressed out pretty good. Just got a chopstick in there. Looks good. Just gonna put a couple of clips on, roll that seam nice and flat, and I will top stitch these layers. Here we go.
And then I'll go ahead and just baste the top shut. We don't need to leave it open. Yay, we did it. All right, there's my flap. Next step. I'm gonna add my flap to my main panel back piece. So here's my main, ba main back panel piece. I have my center and I transferred the flat placement from my pattern piece to my material. I have my flap. I have my center marked on my flap as well. I'm going to put some double-sided tape along the back edge. And then I'm going to center and place this flap on that line centered up, right sides up, and your flap is going up towards the top of the panel piece. Okay, your flap's going up this way. It's right side up, raw edge on that placement line. I'm going to baste that down or sew it down, I guess. take this piece. What is this called? The flap support piece. And I want to draw another line three eighths of an inch up from the raw edge of the flap. And that's your placement for this piece. It's gonna go right there, right? Yes. I just need to mark the center of this so I know that I've lined it up right in the center. It's gonna come up here. All right, I'm gonna place that on and I'm going to top stitch around that piece. I do have double-sided tape on the back of it already. I'm going to take that off. All right, so about right there along that line. That looks good and centered. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to sew around that piece. Now, if you don't want to show back stitching, you can pull your threads through and tie. I I'm just going to backstitch. It's up to you. Ah, I went too fast. Maybe I'll pull it through. <laughs> Sometimes my foot doesn't have as much control as I would like it to. So we'll pull those threads through. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it through right now before I get any farther. If you just tug on this back thread, it pops your top thread through and then you have both underneath. Same thing, just tug that back thread. It'll pull it right through and then tie those off. And then you don't have any back stitching and it looks really nice on the front. That's always an option that you can do on any bag. When you have major contrasting threads, it really is nice to do this. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, that looks good. All right, there's that. Let's work on our gusset pieces. All right, so I already put on my connector and my piping on the first gusset side. All right, so that's done. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So here's my second piece here. I've got, she had markings for um, bridge connectors on the pattern piece. I'm kind of going off of those. I know my connectors are just a little different, but I think they'll work just as good. I don't think there'll be any issue. Let me make sure, make sure you know which, um, which slots your prongs are going through. Because if you mark the wrong ones on here, then it's gonna be gonna be sad. Okay, so I wanna line up. I like to line up that top dot there with the top line on my washer. And I'm kind of centering it down this middle center line here. And I'm actually, I'm just gonna mark it with a pen and then cut it out here. So I know it's my first and my second to the last. And then I'm going to carefully cut along that line, top and bottom. All right. And then put in my prongs. I do have some of the connectors that she has in this pattern, that style. I do have some coming to my shop, to my website. They're actually on their way right now. They just didn't get here in time for this video. So these ones will do good for now though. All right, and then there, and then I'm gonna fold those in. I put an extra piece of Decaville Heavy behind it because I know how much pressure this um, connector is going to take. So I want to make sure that I am supporting that nicely. And then some tape behind it. Okay, looks good. Now I wanna do my piping. So I'm doing it just a tiny bit different. I'm putting a piece of foam. So normally I just take a piece of vinyl, I fold it in half, I sew it on, there's nothing in it. It's just kind of like a faux piping that I do. But I had the idea, what if you put a little piece of foam down the middle, you can still use your regular foot to sew it, but then it's got some body to it and it's not completely flat that way. So. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out in the end. I think it's going to look good. It looks good on the first piece I did. Um, so hopefully it's a winner. <laughs> I'm putting this just down. Oh, I stretched it. Don't stretch it though. Putting this down through the center. I've got some double-sided tape on there to hold it in place. And then I will just baste the raw edges together and then I will add it to my gusset piece. All right, so I'm gonna fold it in half. You don't have to kind of squish that foam in there. I think it's gonna work though. I think it's gonna do what I want it to do. All right, and then get that under there. We're just gonna baste first with these two raw edges together. And then we'll add it to our gusset.
So I don't know if you can tell, but it totally does give it kind of that round shape that you want from the piping. I think it's gonna look good. Okay. I wanna take my gusset piece and measure an inch down on each side, and that's my beginning and ending for my piping. Need a drink. Throat's getting dry. Okay. I've got my piping. I'm going to start it just above that line there and start clipping it. Raw edge to raw edge down this side. Now the trick with piping is when you get to these curves, you really need to put some snips into that piping and curve it along and stretch it. And it will lay nicer when your bag is all finished. So I'm just putting some clips in this curve there. And I'm guessing I need more clips about here. Get some more clips out. All right, and then as I curve it around, I'm gonna stretch it just the tiniest bit around that curve. All clipped on and now you just want to baste that. Baste that on there so it stays. So when you start here you're gonna pull it off right where that one inch marking is. You're easing that on and off right there. Bring it back off right there at that one inch mark. Trim it off even with the side of your gusset here. And that's your faux piping. Obviously, if you're doing real piping, you'll have to change your foot when you're sewing all this together and have a skinnier foot for that piping, but I think with this foam, it's gonna be kind of awesome. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Okay, next step. I'm going to add my base piece to my front and back panel now. I did make sure I have my centers marked on the sides of this piece. You're gonna need that. And also on your gusset pieces, make sure your center is marked down here at the bottom. That's gonna be important for the assembly of the bag. So I'm going to line up this base along the bottom here. Center that up and clip it, and then you're gonna sew it, and your seam allowance is a little bit bigger for this step, so pay attention to your seam allowances. Right sides together, sew it up.
I'm gonna fold it with the seam allowance going towards the bottom of the bag here, and we are going to top stitch that. So that's what I have. Now I wanna take the back panel piece with the flap on it and do the same thing at the bottom of that. I'm gonna line up my base piece. I'm gonna clip it on. We're gonna sew it, flip it, top stitch it. That should be a sticker. Okay, <laughs> there we go. And again, you want your seam allowance going towards the base of the bag and we're top stitching along the base. Now that I have that all put together, I'm gonna take one side of my gusset. So I'm taking one side of my gusset and we're gonna start by clipping the center of this bottom panel piece to the center of my bottom of the gusset. So here's my center marks right here, right? Yes, I'm gonna clip that together in a couple spots here. All right, after that bottom is clipped, I'm gonna take this. You're gonna have to kind of get your flap out of your way. And we wanna bring the corners together up at the top. So I'm gonna clip these corners up here. Now to get this to fit in, you are gonna need to do some little snips on your curve, just tiny, because your seam allowance is not that big. So you don't want those snips to be very big. All right, and then we're gonna fit that all in there. It fits nice and snug, it should be good to go. I don't have any issues getting that in there. Okay, so that's the first. So now you just wanna take this side and repeat. You're gonna bring your top edges up together, match those, and then come down and get that curve fitted in there. So that's what we're looking at. Here's my piece. Here's this piece. All right, I'm gonna take it with this up, my gusset down. And sew that on.
That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm debating if I should do a second row, but I think, I think I'll be okay. All right. That is my first go around. See that piping sticking out there? That looks good. That's what it looks like on the back. All right, so now I need to repeat with this side. Same steps, same thing, just the other side now. Let's do it. So I'll mash my bottoms up first, and then I will do the top sides and then go from there. Right. I'm going to turn this out and see what we got. Let's do it. That's cute. All right, here we go. Look how adorable that is. Oh my goodness. I'm wondering if I should not have used Decaville. I wonder if fleece or foam might've worked better when I get those grommets in there, but no, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll still be okay. Ah, look how cute that's gonna be. Ah, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, next step. I'm going to work on a zipper pocket for the inside of the lining. It's not necessary, um, it's optional, and I always like an inside zipper pocket. So I'm just gonna do it my way. Um, she has a tutorial on how to do it with a zipper facing. I'm just doing it where I put it directly on. So I have my centers marked. I did about an inch and a half down from this point. Um, and I have my box drawn on is just one inch down, a half inch wide, and one inch in from each side. And then just kind of make sure it's on there straight. That looks pretty good. Right there, all right, I'm gonna sew around the box. Right sides are together when you're doing zipper pockets. Then I'm going to cut that box that I just sewed around out. You can use scissors. You can use a seam ripper. I like to use this little X-Acto knife Fiskars tool. It's my favorite. I use it a lot in my bag making. Okay. I do that little V cut on the ends. I do have my iron kind of heated up so I can press this. I'm just gonna pull that through. Okay. 
and back. Okay, just like that. There's my zipper opening. I'm gonna go take that to my iron and carefully give it a little press and then we'll put in the zipper. It's all pressed back, we're ready to put our zipper in. I have my zipper with some double-sided tape on both sides. I wanna put it in with the zipper going from left to right. That's just how I prefer to do it. It's not like a rule or anything. I will be trimming down the zipper tape after I insert it so it's not in my seam allowances, but right now it's just a little bit longer just to give me some wiggle room and make sure I get that nice and centered in there. All right, I've got the back or the bottom and then I'm gonna take off the top. And get that placed where I want it. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna sew around that. My zipper is in. All I need to do now is close this up. So I'm gonna bring the bottom of my zipper lining up to the top here. I am not leaving my zipper open. Um, I'm pulling my bag through the side of my lining. So I'm completely closing this up. If you really wanted to leave your zipper open and your lining open and did the whole pull the lining through and finish it, you could. It's just kind of a small pocket and I'm not sure how difficult that will be. So I am just closing it all the way up. All right, here we go. Make sure you pull your lining out of the way while you're doing that. Go ahead and close it up. I like to go in close to the zipper right here and catch that little triangle piece if you can. to be stuck in my seam allowance there. All right, I'll melt the ends here and then we'll start putting together the lining. The construction of the lining is almost identical to the exterior. The only change is you want to increase your seam allowance on those gussets as we go, and I will show you that. But this bottom piece that I'm adding here is the same as we did on the exterior. Okay, so I'm gonna place this on right sides together, sew it at that bigger seam allowance. Pay attention to your seam allowances. Um, and then I will turn it, top stitch, and then add the other side. My seam allowance is going towards my bottom piece. Okay. 
my other side here. Okay, right sides together. Match it up. If you wanted to be super accurate, you could do your center markings on the bottom of these. I did not. It's pretty, this one's pretty easy to tell how to get it lined up, but you could totally do that if you're unsure. Okay, flip. I want my seam allowance going towards this bottom piece here. And top stitch. Awesome. So now I'm going to just fold this in half and clip my centers on this bottom piece here because I will need that for the assembly of the gussets. And then I'll take my gusset pieces and do the same. Clip my centers top and bottom. assembling this pretty similar well totally similar <laughs> exactly the same as our exterior so I've got my lining my pieces just are a little slippery but hopefully it'll work okay so I'm gonna match I'm sorry my watch is talking to me all right I'm gonna match the bottoms up first here center clips right here and then I'll take it to the top and come down, take it to the top and come down, and then I will do some clips in my gussets. Okay, so I'm gonna take this to my machine. I'm gonna sew this on. Um, I'm not, I'm going to leave a hole on the other side. So I'm going to completely sew this side on. And then when I get to the other side, I will leave a hole on the side here to turn my bag through. I'm going to start at that fourth inch seam allowance up at the top. And I'm just going to increase it just a little bit to about a three eighths seam allowance. And then come back to that fourth when I reach the other side here. That'll just ensure that your lining fits snugly inside your exterior and it's not super baggy. I'm just gonna trim around these curves just the tiniest bit just so I don't know I don't really need that extra seam allowance in there. That'll help it lay nicer too. I'm not trimming a tone off, just a little bit. All right. Looks good. Now I'm going to attach the second half and this time going around, I will leave um, a hole opening on this side of the bag. That 
almost didn't leave a hole. Don't forget to leave a hole. And I'm just gonna unpick this real quick. Easy to open up. Whoops. You guys are probably yelling at me from the other side of the camera <laughs> right now. Stop. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I'm probably about right there, I would think. It's a good spot. All right. So I'm just going to kind of sew back over right here. And then come, I like to come off at a 90 degree angle here. It just kind of reinforces that seam for the pressure of turning it. And it also helps it all lay nice when you go to close it up. All right, we're good. I've got my hole now. All right, and then probably about right there. Do you think that's big enough? Guess we'll find out. Okay, I left a hole. There's my lining. We are going to now take the exterior and we are going to put it into the lining. I want the zipper pocket along the back of my bag, so I make sure I put it in that way. The back of the bag up next to the zipper. Okay. I want this down here. All right, let's fit it all in. It's going to be a tight fit because you did do your um, lining a little bit smaller, right? With that smaller seam allowance. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first do all of my seams. I'm going to line all of my seams up first. I do like to flatten mine. You can nest them if you would like. I'm going to flatten mine. All right. And then I'm going to go to this side and get this one in there, kind of smush it down. That's fine. All right, it's in. I'm gonna go ahead and sew around the top and then we'll pull it through this hole.
Okay, that is all sewn on. I am gonna take pinking shears. It's gonna take me a minute. I'm gonna take pinking shears around this because it's kind of curvy and um, I really want it to lay nice. I'm not cutting a ton off of my seam allowance. I'm just notching it. Especially around these side curves here. I just wanna make sure they're looking nice. Let's hope that this fits through this hole. <laughs> I think it should. Let's turn it. take this and top stitch it first. I'm just kind of pressing everything out here. Oh, that's cute. Ah, that's going to be so cute. All right. I'm just going to take some clips, roll this seam out and get this laying really nicely for my top stitch. And we'll do that before we close up the seam. And then after that, we will put our grommets or large eyelets, I guess is what they're called, that I am using into the bag.
All right, it looks good, all top stitched. I am just going to pull this lining out here and close that up. And then we will work on our grommets and our drawstring. My material's a little bit slick, so this definitely will not be perfect closing it up here, but I think it'll be okay. Close that So everything's in. It looks really good. Um, now I'm going to go around and punch the holes. So you see, I already have my markings in my exterior. So now I just need to hold those two layers together, punch my holes for my large eyelet slash grommets and insert those. Okay. I'm going to do my best to try and show you um, my way of doing this. So here I've already put in one these might be a little bit bigger than what the pattern calls for, but they're what I had. Um, that's what the back looks like. That's what the front looks like. Again, these are more called large eyelets from, I think I got them from Hobby Lobby a while ago. Um, I'll show you it. You had tools that you can buy with it. I have tried to see if I could figure out my cam press eyelet sets and I cannot, the dies for those, I cannot figure it out. So I'm using a hammer and tools. Um, I am using the press to cut out the hole though. So I will show you how I do that. Um, you want your hole to be slightly smaller than your actual eyelet. It needs to fit really snug on that eyelet. If it's too big, it's going to pop out. So you need a really tight fit. So go for a smaller sized hole then you're opening on the eyelet. I got these, these metal dies from um, Amazon quite a while ago. I use them for my turn locks, for eyelets. They're kind of fabulous. They come in a pack like this, okay? All sorts of shapes. So I take this little guy right here. I've got my little hole marking that I already did from the pattern, and I'm just gonna try and place that in the center of this die as best I can. <laughs> and then I put it here. I've got some press plates. You can get these, I'm pretty sure Cam Snaps carries these press plates, okay? And I'm just taking this. I have to stand up. I cannot sit down to use this. Got to use a little bit of muscle and it gives you a perfect hole. It's kind of fabulous, <laughs> kind of amazing. All right, so I've got my hole. I'm just going to show you guys one because this is, you know, it takes a minute. Um, and then I'll go ahead and do all of mine. I have this block that I like to use. And this is the tools that came with this, these large eyelet slash grommet they were sitting by it, I should say. They didn't come with it, they were sitting by it. So this part right here is gonna go on the outside. And again, it just, like I have to press it and stretch it around that hole. That's what you want, okay? And then this piece is gonna lay right there 
around that grommet. It fits perfectly. It's made for this size. And then I put it on my block. And then I have the other side. It's got some little prongs right there too. And it just slides right on there. I take this tool, I set it in, and then I'm going to hit it pretty dang hard till it's nice and snug. And it rolls it down. Yeah, nice and tight on there. And that's what I want. That's what I want. All right, I only have 10 more to go. <laughs> Obviously, if I could figure out the dies for my press and the right grommets, this would go quicker, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these on and then we will put in our drawstring. Okay, I have all my grommets put on. Um, it looks really good after the fact. It's just kind of a pain. It's just time consuming. Grommets are time consuming. And maybe if I figured out how to use my press, it would be quicker. I do really love the look of the finished product though with the grommets. All right, so I have my drawstring and I am going to just put it through my grommets now. So you're just gonna kind of weave it, start like that. And then you're gonna come in and out. Just like that, okay? So you get to the front, in, out, and then it should just go in there. Beautiful, and then I want to, I think I'm gonna put my little, look at that, and then it just, hey, ah, look at that. You pull it and it just comes together. Look at that. <gasps> that is cute. I don't think I would use Decaville next time. I think I would definitely use, um, Fabric Therapy has some self-adhesive fleece. I think that's maybe what I would use um, when I make this bag next time. All right, so I have my drawstring adjustment piece cut out here. If you really wanted this to make it look nice, you could do it double-sided and you could edge coat it. I'm not going to because the backing is about the same color as the front, so it's not terribly different. So you want to wrap this around here to hold these together. I am going to just make a mark and cut out a hole where I want that to be on there about right there and I'm gonna just do an eye or a, a rivet around my around my two pieces and I need a rivet that is what I'm gonna do and then we will add the two zipper end caps to that I'm gonna encase that that tight enough? Oh, I wonder if I should have made it tighter. It might be okay. All right, let's press it. If that's not tight enough, I can always cut out another one and redo that piece super easily. That's not the end of the world. Oh, that might be good actually. I think that's perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna put on my zipper end caps and then we're done, I think. Yeah, are we done? What happened to my zipper end caps? There they are. So I've got two of those. Hopefully they just slide on there. I haven't tested these yet. Let's see, hey, yep, they just slide right on. Put the screw on the back. You could put a little glue in there if you wanted to. It's 
up to you. The screws are pretty good for the most part, and I don't feel like this is going to be the end of these are going to be tugged on much, so I think you're okay with just the screw. But if you wanted to be extra safe, put some glue in there. All right, there's one. Let's make sure I'm putting it on the right way. This way. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Long nails and baby screws kind of don't mix well. <laughs> ah. There we go. Okay, guess what? We are all done. That there. Choo, choo, choo. And this. Done. Okay, we are all done. Look how awesome that turned out. I love it so much. Such a cool design. I would definitely use maybe a fleece on my vinyl next time or maybe even nothing at all. I don't know how much interfacing that really needs. Just because the Decaville isn't as soft for, you know, pulling it in for that drawstring. So I think a softer interfacing or none at all on these. Uh, vinyl pieces would be awesome, but I love the end result of this bag. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please let me know if you have any comments, uh, questions. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.